Hey guys, Omerko here, self-taught web developer with another video for Angular Material series. This time we will work with the slider component. As you can see right here on my screen, we have these slides that we can use, we can invert those and also use vertical and horizontal ones. Next to these examples, I will show you how can you use this nice label as well from, uh, well, Angular Material directly. Also, what you should know here is that this video belongs to Angular Material series. And if you wish to watch full series where we are going through all components and full component dev kit from Angular Material, well, you will have a link to that series down in the, well, in the description of this video. Now, let's start. First of all, for this video, I will generate a specific component for my slider. To do that, I will run command of ng, g for generate, c for component, and I will generate my component in components slash slider folder. Once our component is generated, we can open up our app.component.html uh, file, and here I will hide this slide toggle component from the last video. If you wish to watch that video, you will have a link down in the description of this one. But after this one, I will use slider as a comment and here I will use app slider component that I just generated. Let me also use end of slider for ending comment here. Now, usually we need to import the proper module for all of the components that we wish to use, well, from Angular Material. So, go into your app.module.ts file and in this file, first of all, I will grab this component that I just generated and move it to the top to keep my file a bit organized. You can already see that there is quite a lot of imports. And now here what I can do after my slide toggle module import, I can import mat slider module here. And this module must be imported from at angular slash material slash slider. And that's it. Be also sure to pass this mat slider module down in imports array as well. You should also know that we already worked with this slider a bit at the beginning of this series. And down in the description you will find the video for that one as well. But with this here, we can go into our components into slider and open up the HTML file for it and let's start well using our slider component here. First of all I will create a div with style attribute. To this style attribute I will add text align to be center and also margin on a top to be 50 pixel. And that's it. Now inside I can simply use my slider. To use a slider well we can simply use math slider component and that is pretty much it. By this we already added the default slider from material. If you wish you can customize that slider a bit. For example, I will create another matte slider here, but this one can be inverted. So use invert keyword here to invert the slider so to not drag it from left to right, but from right to left. Also here, let's add another slider and for this one I will use vertical. This vertical attribute will make the slider vertical not horizontal. Now in my browser I could check what I did. Here I do have three sliders, well the one normal one, the default one, then I have inverted one and also vertical slider. Now next to these options we are also able to customize the well proper HTML options like like minimum value, maximum value, different step and also the value itself for the slider. To do that, right after this div, I will create another div, which will, well, can hold the same properties like, well, same attribute of style with text align center and margin on a top to be 50 pixel. And for this here, I will create another slider. So mat slider here, and let's use some HTML values here. As mat slider as a whole component is just the slider from HTML that we can use, well, our input slider that we can use, here we are able to pass min property, for example, well, for minimum value, I will set the minimum value to be 1 or even a 0, and then max property for maximum value, I will set that to be 100. We can also specify the step itself, which will present when we drag that how many values we should skip. For example, I will set 10 here. So when we start 
dragging our slider, we should go from 0 to 10 to 20, 30 and so on, and we should never see the numbers in between those, we should never see number 12 or number 7. And last attribute that I will pass here is the value itself. We can also hard code, well, specify the value here. We can also property bind this value through Angular as well. I will specify the value to be 50, which will mean that my slider should be at half by default. Now visiting my browser, I can already see that my slider, well, is here, this down below. And we can see that it is at the half of the slider, this bullet point. We are still able to move it left and right and you can see that it will kind of skip because it is skipping those values by that step which we specified to be 10 and it is skipping from 0 to 100. Now obviously here we don't know at which number we are currently, right? And let's present the number and also the material has nice label that could well work nicely with material UI for this slider. To specify that label from material, the only attribute that we need to pass here is called thumb label. You don't need to pass any value to it, you can just use the attribute itself. Now on my screen, if I start dragging my slider, I will see this nice label at the top of it. We don't see that bullet point now. We can see that it starts from zero, it is also changing the color, and we can see that it goes to 100. As this is all for this video guys, if you have any questions, well, be sure to ask those down below and I will surely answer you. Again, just to mention here, this video belongs to Angular Material series, and if you wish to watch the full series, you will have a link to the series down below, well, in description of this video. Thank you all for watching, and if you liked what you saw, please click like and subscribe as I am posting new content weekly. Thank you once again, and I will see you in my next video. Bye bye.